Hello, and welcome to Growing Youth Voice Engagement and Leadership Through Service Learning. In this session, you're going to discover what service learning is, the impact it has on students, how it elevates youth voice and leadership, as well as some examples of what it looks like. And hopefully we'll leave you with some practical insights and strategies that you can apply right away. Um, before we get started, um, I'm gonna quickly introduce myself. My name is Amy Muirs. I'm the CEO for the National Youth Leadership Council. We're a national nonprofit that has been supporting youth voice and youth leadership through service learning for more than 40 years. During this session, I want to encourage you to pause and reflect as needed throughout the session and remember that we're here to support you. So let's dive in. So first and foremost, what is service learning? So there are many, many different definitions of service learning. This is NYLC's definition. It's an approach to teaching and learning in which students use academic and civic knowledge and skills to address genuine community needs. So when you break all of that down, what does it mean? It means that there's learning and service, which is why the hyphen in between service and learning is so important. Young people are doing by learning. It's hands-on learning that helps them develop their character, their competencies, trust with each other. With their, with their educator, with their community, and it is um, creating positive change in the world. So when you think about service learning, think about the hyphen and make sure that there's learning and service going hand in hand. There are many different ways to think about service learning, but service learning is a process. So when you think about um, the project or the service that young people do, that's wonderful and good and volunteering is so important. Um, service learning is a larger process. So it's not just about that service project. It's experiential. Students are hands-on. They're getting engaged in what they're, what they're learning. They're constructing their own knowledge along the way. Service learning is an evidence-based practice. There are over 1,200 research studies on service learning. It integrates all of the effective elements of an effective pedagogy. So it's authentic, it's constructionist, it's personalized, it's active and collaborative, it's empowering for young people, and it expands their boundaries. Service learning embraces youth voice and builds leadership skills, and we're going to dig into that more. Um, but youth voice is at the heart of a service learning experience. And it teaches young people civic responsibility through active participation. They're engaging with their community. They're involved in civic life. And it's such a deep and wonderful connection that they build, like I say, not only with each other, but directly with the community. When we think about service learning, I wanna focus first on what the young people experience. And then I'm gonna back up and talk about how we do this with young people. Um, we fondly call the youth experience, youth service learning experience, IPARD. So first, young people investigate the issue. So even if we predetermined that we know we need young people to be working on a STEM project, um, maybe we've already partnered with our local park and we know that they're going to be doing a riverbank cleanup. We still back up and have young people take a deep dive into the issue area. We want them to become experts in this, right? So maybe they do um, a community walkabout and learn how the, the um, water is used and and impacting the local community. Um, they interview um, the national park and other experts about why water or evasive species along the riverbanks um, are important issues to address. Uh, they do research, all of the things that help them understand why this issue is important and how, most importantly, how it's impacting their local community. Once they've done that investigation, then they start to plan and prepare. So this is, I think, where um, 
the youth voice and youth leadership can really start to rise to the top. So when we're thinking about planning and preparing for a project, having young people lean into their skills, right? So who is who's wonderful at communications or passionate about learning about communication and wants to take on that role? Who's the who's the budget manager? Who's the one that really likes to think about the numbers and making sure that things are um working out the way they're supposed to, who is encouraging um, your more outgoing young people to go in and get um, donations for supplies, who's filling out the forms to make sure that um, you have permission to be at that park, right? Who's who's looking at those details? Um, there's different roles that young people can play in the planning and preparation process that helps them bring their skills and build those skills um, and also get them excited and engaged. They work together as a team. Um, so it's all collaborative. So that planning and preparation um, phase is so important. And then you see action here on this slide. And you'll notice when you look at the pie chart, action is actually the smallest slice. It's the one that we think about the most that we build up to. But the, what's around it is where a lot of that learning and connection and youth voice and leadership really comes in. Action is so important. It can look different. It can be direct, indirect. It could be advocacy. So many different things that young people can do to take action. Um, but having having them lead and and be the ones who drive that is is a very powerful way for service learning to to reach those outcomes that we're looking for for our students. The reflection and um, reflection actually happens throughout the entire process. We know that um, through reflection, we really encourage learning for students. So that's how they connect to their learning. So it's not just about individual reflection. How does this impact me? but it's the larger reflection. What is this looking like with community? The group reflections, the community reflections, um, bringing out the learning outcomes for, for individuals, for the team and for the community at large. And one of my favorite parts of the service learning process is demonstration. It's where young people get to celebrate and show the work that they've done. They get to talk about what their investigation was, why this issue is important, what they learned, how they did it, how they, the change that they made, the failures they might have had along the way, what they learned from that and what they would do differently or how they would continue the project. So demonstration is such a powerful tool for young people to be able to celebrate, be acknowledged and show the impact that they're, ha they're having on their community. So how do we do this, right? Like, how do we get people started in this um, service learning experience um, while in making sure that we're intentionally connecting to learning outcomes? So we um, at NYLC have um, created service learning by design. It's a backwards by design process that many educators are familiar with. Um, but we start with what are the outcomes we want for our young people? So we know the, the experience young people are going to have. They're going to investigate, plan and prepare, take action. They're going to be reflecting. They're going to demonstrate. So what are the outcomes that we're after? Um, is it English language? Is it social emotional? Is it STEM? Are there specific leadership skills we want them to develop? Identifying those skills first helps us then go to stage two and think about what are the um what's the evidence we're going to collect that we that so that we can show that students are actually gaining those skills. So when we think about um, formative assessments um, or summative assessments, um, summative, I really think about um, as demonstration, right? Like they could be building up to that summative assessment throughout the entire process. Perhaps they're putting together a portfolio of all the things that they have done. Um, they're putting, they put on a science fair type um, expo at the end that has this whole like experience. Um, it's a summative assessment of their learning, but the formative assessments along the way are very important too. So 
um, reflection offers a great opportunity for observations. We can do exit tickets, all sorts of different things to collect evidence of learning. Um, young people can create presentations, right? Um, if you haven't identified the project and young people get to actually determine what that project is going to be, um, you could have them work in teams and create a um, create a presentation to try to convince um, the others in their in their group that this is the issue area that we're going to address. Um, so presentations, um, uh, videos, all sorts of different ways to collect evidence of learning. And then we have um, young people having that service learning experience. And then the final stage for educators is really that self-assess. Um, I love when we integrate young people into this stage as well, but how was our facilitation of the service learning experience? How did young people engage in it? What were the challenges? What would we do differently the next time we, we facilitate service learning? So that self-assessment um, piece is so important as educators um, to be able to improve our, our service learning practice. So lots of ways to, um, to bring service learning to life for young people to demonstrate and show that the learning in service learning is actually happening and we're getting to those outcomes that we want for young people. Now, I'm not gonna talk about all the different um, benefits of service learning, but I do wanna highlight just a couple. When we're talking about leadership skills, youth take on such amazing roles and develop as leaders through service learning. So like I talked about with the planning and preparation, right? They, they get to see what they have to bring to the table and they get to elevate that. They build their strength. It truly does develop their leadership skills. It absolutely promotes civic engagement. We're cultivating that civic responsibility and preparing young people to be engaged and informed citizens. They understand that they need to dig into the issues, understand the local impact, that they're part of a larger community and it's not just the individual. They have the opportunity to think about life skills and career pathways. Um, they get to connect with people that they might never have connected with, but because of being out and engaging with the community, all of a sudden, oh, I didn't know that being a park ranger was a thing, or oh, I didn't know that I could do that. So like these aha moments that happen through service learning are some of the most amazing benefits that sometimes they can, hopefully we're encouraging and planning those, but sometimes they happen just authentically and naturally um, through the service learning process. One thing that the research shows that we see through service learning is it increases student engagement. So in a time when everything is showing that students are disconnected, they're not engaging, service learning connects young people to their learning. It's real world. They understand why they're learning, what they're learning, and it makes learning relevant. It's exciting. They're seeing what they're doing can actually make a difference both locally and we can connect it globally. So there are so many different benefits to service learning, but if you walk away with just one, know that it's going to increase the engagement of your young people. They're going to show up because of service learning. So I wanted to give you just a few examples of what this looks like. Um, NYLC has um, had a teen driver safety program called Project Ignition for about 15 years. And one of my favorite service learning um, experiences that young people did was in a school in Montana. Um, it was an after school program, and they identified truck surfing as the issue that was happening in their community. So, if like me, you're like, what is truck surfing? It's literally what it sounds like. You get in the back of a flatbed pickup, and they're driving fast down a dirt road, bouncing around in the back of a truck, surfing, trying to stand up. And so this group of young people and their adult leader, their, their educator, um, said that this is an issue. We've lost two lives to truck surfing. And so they did interviews with their peers in their school to find out why this was such, such an issue, why 
everyone wanted to do this. Um, and then they developed a peer-to-peer -peer campaign to end truck surfing in their school. And they did. They were saving lives because of their service learning experience. They developed their communication and their leadership skills. They learned to analyze data. They looked at um, what was happening across the nation and how other um, area, rural areas were addressing similar issues. And then they applied what they were learning to their campaign that they ran in their school. Such a powerful um, service learning experience for those young people. And then impacted, the impact was actually in saving lives. Um, similarly, um, we were working with an after school program through Campfire called Poder and Salud. Um, there were other teams involved, but this Campfire team that we were working with um, had teens that became promotoris or health fair worker or community health workers. And so they created health fairs in their community. Um, messaging campaigns around um, vaccine hesitation. Um, they became experts for their community in health so that they could help their community navigate the post-pandemic um, struggles that they were having. Um, what was really unique and interesting with this group of young people is we were actually in partnership with the CDC. So their messages, anything they created went through a federal agency for fact checking. So they learned a lot about media literacy and also how to work with a federal agency. Um, and now their service learning demonstration, their, their final project that they put together is on display at the CDC Museum um, for the COVID-19. So just a powerful learning experience for those young people and the impact they had on their local community um, was huge. And, and now they're taking um, their health work um, to the next level and looking at disaster recovery for their community. So they are continuing on because they had such a powerful learning experience. And then a third, um, third example I wanted to give you that is also um, working with teens um, was NYLC's Youth Advisory Council identified mental health as the issue that they wanted to address. This is um, two years ago. And they did a national scan of, um, of resources that were available for teens. And that what was missing was the youth voice within those materials. And so they published a, um, a resource for young people on mental health and where to find resources, and also how to take action in your um, in your local school or after school program to support mental health with with other students. And then they held a youth summit um, to share this resource, but also to share the service learning process with other young people so that they could um, lead mental health awareness campaign and address mental health issues within their own local schools. So thinking about um, how other young people can um, share with other young people how to take action and empower them to make a difference locally. We've also seen amazing service learning experiences happen at the elementary age. Um, one of the elementary schools um, we're aware of identified um, food insecurity, young, their fellow peers were hungry. And so they were like, we can't learn if we're hungry. And so they worked with the school to develop a recycling program that included a share table. So leftover food was put out so that students could take it home. And they were able to move from a share table to now they have a food pantry in their school because they knew that if if I'm hungry, I can't learn. And so whether it's elementary school students thinking about food insecurity in that way, middle school students testing river water or looking at invasive species and cleaning up river banks or teens tackling safe driving. There are so many wonderful examples out there of how young people can use service learning as a way to grow their knowledge and skills 
while making a real impact on the community. And as you think about what what you're going to do next, um, I really want you to walk away with, with the fact that service learning engages the hands, the heart, and the head. And it's those three things that when they're connected, make service learning such a powerful way to engage our young people. And we encourage you to, um, to elevate youth voice through service learning to help them build those leadership skills and to become those engaged and informed citizens. Thank you.